Hey everyone, back down here in Miami this week for Trade to Black as we bring in and we talk psychedelics with probably the most influential person in the space, Christian Agermeyer, the founder of Retire Life Sciences. We finally get a chance to see each other face to face. Exactly, first time. Uh, how are things? Good, good. Uh, thanks for having me. Thanks for watching. Busy day uh, so this, far? Yeah, busy day. Very excited about that. First time I do carpool karaoke. <laughs> as long as I don't sing, like that you don't want. But like everything else is yeah, fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. What did you think of the whole concept? Do you like this? You live in London. I love so it. King's no, it's something different. It, right? Yeah, exactly. Like uh, as I said, as long as nobody wants me to sing, because that's not what the world needs. Yeah, everything is fine. It's a very cool concept. Right. So for people that are still learning the industry, we've had on uh, you on the podcast a number of times. So this is viewed as right now one of the biggest conferences pertaining to this industry that's taking place right now. So most important thing when we look at this, what are some of the hot topics that are being discussed from what you've experienced being here so far? It's a very many. I, the one which was before me, I just was on stage, was uh, interestingly sex and psychedelics. I didn't yeah. think they're going to have a topic like that. Yeah, it's a really wide range from yeah. the medical use of psychedelics to uh, more the shamanistic traditions, more the uh, recreational stuff. So it's a really like very broad, all-encompassing, uh, right. great conference. So you're the founder of a Pyron Investment Group. You look at this industry, you've looked at crypto, um, you're a big believer in this industry. Um, you have events put on where you're linked with people like Queen Latifah, Kevin Love, Giannis, Robbie Williams. So when people look at you, they look at you as somebody who has a thought leader in the space that understands the direction of where this industry is going. We look at share prices and the way they performed over the last 12 months, 80, 90% down. What are you seeing and what do you believe in that the average investor can maybe learn from you? And I don't even think that the average investor is at the moment selling any biotech for the, for the nature now. Uh, right. Uh, it's, it's more like we are in this down cycle of tech and biotech because of macro reasons. Like we all know the the, infl uh, the inflation topic, inflation creates higher interest rates. Higher interest rates are, per definition, bad for more like long dated or, or companies like biotech and tech companies where the cash flow is far in the right. future. Yeah. Um, having said that, unfortunately, in, in, a, in, a, in, in these bear markets, people don't differentiate because if, for example, take a tie, yes, we still a biotech company in the terms of that we're doing research and our cash flows are in the future, but we have more than seven late stage drugs. So right. our cash flow is actually quite seven least, late stage, yeah, which is important. Uh, which is phase two, three, someone one like, but like sort of, so for example, the market doesn't differentiate, should have, or was it right that some early stage biotech com companies went down up to 90%? Yeah, because like if your sort of approval is 10 years out, yeah, yeah then the sort of interest rates really make a difference. Was it in my point of view, but I'm obviously talking as the main shareholder, owner, founder. Yeah. Was it justified that a tie went down? Or oh, by the way, many other biotech companies were not the only one. Yeah. No, not in this crazy way, because like we're trading at the moment at, uh, at practically cash plus what our stake in Compass right. is worth. Right. So you get these other seven late stage drugs practically for free and every single one actually should be once approved a multi-billion dollar truck. So I would actually make up uh, or make the, make, make the, the calculation that we have the potential with a tie to become right. a 10, 20 billion dollar business and not in 10 years, but in two, three, four years. 10 to 20 billion next year. Yeah, because if you look at every single drug we're doing, if you look at the size of the market, yeah. which is unfortunately very big because like mental health is the number one problem. Yeah. And then you would say an approved drug which has the potential to cure one or even more mental health issues should be very simplified said every single one should be a multi-billion dollar right uh drug so you, yeah how many trials do you have currently going on right now and how much are in the advanced stages so for sometimes we have more trials for the same drug but we have seven late stage drugs yeah right. from dmt ibogaine arketamine which is right. reading out in december yeah. so you own is it 19 percent of compass yeah and no sorry we, atai owns uh, around 23% off Compass. Right, and Compass probably will have telling phase three trial results at some point in 2023. End of 2023, maybe it's 20, early 24, but like, so I don't know what they're guiding for, but like roundabout in one and a half years. So yeah. where are we if we have this conversation 12 months from now? Well, 12 months from now, hopefully we're right before the Compass readout, which will be the biggest milestone in psychedelic uh, history because right. it's gonna be the first yeah. 
uh, approved psychedelic drugs since the since the 50s. And again, then Compass alone, which is also trading by the way crazily low, should be a multi-billion dollar company Tell me because that. it's going to be an approved drug for. You believe uh, that. Yeah, no, not just believe that. This is what the mass tells you. It's like if you look at pricing, market size, whatever, this is the market at the moment, the stock market. Normally people say, oh, the stock market is efficient. It's not. It is dysfunctional. Right. Because why do people, by the way, but I could make, I don't want to be seen now just pushing or promoting my own companies. You can make the same calculation for many other biotech companies. So, but what is the case is that the whole biotech industry, meaning you can say we started high because it was the hyped industry during COVID. For sure. So, so high point to start. Yeah, then came the fear of uh, inflation, interest rates, whatever. But then some, at some point when an industry or stock prices go down too much, you have the whole problems like funds are liquidated. Right. Um, right people right. are panicking, whatever. So the, the valuations of the really good biotech companies have nothing to do anymore with reality, their potential, whatever. It's a pure not functioning market. I deeply believe that's a great um, uh, investment uh, opportunity. And right. I think biotech as a sector will be one of the best performing sectors of the next five years. Wow, you believe that because yeah. of the change that we're about to embark? Both, like the change, like and the success, which is because like there's so many, again, not just the tire, tire is just an example I always use because I know it really well or Compass, but like there are many great other companies who really bring life-saving drugs to market in the next two, three years and you get them practically for free. They're trading at cash. Right. That can't be right. Yeah. yeah? And we can argue if, if Compass should be a $1 billion company or a $2 billion company right. or a $5 billion company, but like it's more than cash. Right. What is on your account? I had a CEO on this morning uh, for an interview and she said that she thinks this industry will actually save the healthcare system. Do you believe that? Which one? The uh, psychedelic industry? Right. I mean, that's a bold, but yes, to a certain extent, because like at the moment, meaning mental health issues are the number one um, group of diseases in terms of patients. So more right. than 1 billion people globally are diagnosed with one or more mental health issues. And at the same time, it's indeed extremely costly because there is no real solution. Mm -hmm. So what do people do who have depression at the moment? They have talk therapy forever. And then we try to sort of help them, stabilize them, but they never healed. Yeah. And that creates the enormous costs a single mental health patient puts on the healthcare system. And we have I don't know the number in America is some hundred billion of them. So yes, so I think because psychedelics have the potential to really cure, and I'm deliberately using this word, although a lot of people like it don't create too much hopes. But if I look at people who took it who are fine for good, I want to use the word the cure. Data speaks for yeah, itself. Data speaks for itself. And if we can do that, yeah, we're taking off an enormous cash burden indeed of the healthcare system. So some of the misconception is that if you only have to go in once or twice a year versus saying taking a prescription drug every single day, what are people missing or not understanding as far as big pharma eventually coming in and still looking at it as a thriving business, knowing that it would be less appointments or less prescription that's being taken? Like, how does that all I mean, First of all, about? The, the interesting thing, especially in America, which is maybe, by the way, the problem of, I, I can say that as a foreigner of the healthcare system, but the fact is that drug pricing or one big... We're a little squirrely over here, aren't we? <laughs> so, yeah, so a lot of drug pricing is done, or a, a big part of drug pricing is that you look at the replacement costs, like, right. and you should be a little bit cheaper than the standard of care. Okay. That, so practically, if we are able with one or two trips, or even with one trip a year or whatever, to get people off very costly medication and talk therapy, whatever, then the price for this one trip will be very high and it still makes sense for the healthcare system because gotcha. it's going to be a little bit cheaper than what this patient otherwise would doing. Yeah. And so first of all, so that means like psychedelic um, uh, sessions will be pretty, I don't want to use the word expensive, but they will be fairly valued, but like they will allow companies like Atai and, and Compass to make good profit because we're solving a huge problem mm -hmm. and overall it's still cheaper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And second, unfortunately, there are so many people who need it mm -hmm. yeah, that it's still an amazing business. Insurance yeah. companies. What's the, the view on this industry? You're from, you live in London right now. Yep. Um, how are they viewing? Because the best research I'm finding is coming out of the UK right now pertaining to this industry worldwide. But how are government officials viewing the overall industry, the advancement of it, the research that's being done? Do you think it's further along and further ahead than what you're experiencing here in North America? 
No, North America is, is very advanced. Like, I, I don't see a big difference between Europe. It's interesting, no. by the way, everybody always, you think the grass is green on the other side. So all Americans tell me, oh, the UK is so advanced, whatever. And all the UK people are like, oh, look at America. Like the government is really? so supportive. I think it's fairly the same. And by the way, the governments are really supportive. And we don't need a lot of support from governments. What we really need is data. And right. that's what we right. are producing. Right. Like, I don't but the government officials are obviously learning more from the data that's being required. That's kind of where I'm going with it is that they're Yeah, but understanding... it's even it's, it's more like I think it's more. There is no political decision at the end of the compass trial, which will say, oh, do we want it politically or not? We doing compass and a tie clinical trials. And if our data is right, That's how the yeah, FDA makes a decision. then exactly then it's an agency decision by the FDA and right. in Europe by the European Medical Agency. Right. That is not a political decision. So I'm actually even don't want politicians to get too caught in all of that because then you have the risk of becoming politicized. Right. Yeah, there is no reason. And as people know, I focus on and I think that's the right thing to do for psychedelics on the medical use of them. Yeah, strictly in the medical system together with a therapist for mm -hmm. most of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is a pure FDA or EMA decision. What's that say about a tie right now? 300 million currently in cash. You're able to secure a non-dilutive uh, term facility term loan at, I think it was 175 million if I'm yep. correct. So that was recent. Um, it speaks a lot on who the company and the direction is knowing the current market conditions and knowing that the absence of short-term revenue is not on the horizon. So one, how is that deal even put together? And two, uh, what's the communication, I guess, the Atai team should share with their investment community to secure a uh, $175 million loan during these market conditions? Well, as I say, it was a huge, um, how do you say, stamp of approval. Yeah. Yeah, one reason is, I meaning obviously because we're doing a great job, but also because we're broadly diversified. So it's easier to take long-term right. credit yeah, right. um, and debt when, when you diversify and not depend on, on one trial. Um, so, uh, but it was both. It was definitely, meaning Hercules is the, is the provider. They made a thorough due diligence like an mm -hmm. equity investor would do mm -hmm. um, and then decided to give us this credit line, which allows us, because I would never raise money at these crazy low share prices, to be fully financed till end of 2025. Right. We had you on two weeks ago with uh, Lars Mueller. Yeah, um, uh, great guy. Yeah, great interview. Uh, symbiotic, the uh, German cannabis player. I wanted to ask you because you understand that industry as well. Do you see cannabis companies getting involved in this industry? Yeah, all? but it's not good <laughs> because they have a different mindset. Cannabis is completely different. Love it. Yeah, but cannabis is indeed, and Germany is now a big um, role model, a consumer play. Right. Yeah, I think ultimately what the cannabis industry, rightly so, because it's a totally different drug pushing for is this recreational use legalization, but when how they, they call it. the benefits of medical, do you not see them coming in and buying some of these properties? Like, you know, companies that have compelling data, because I think there's, there's just not a yeah, lot. Yeah, you could see, but it's, it's really like, it's two different worlds. The one is very much focused on consumer products. Yeah, you have to, what is it called? GW Pharma. Yeah. They were a little yeah. bit, they are very similar to a tie, but it's, I have the feeling, but I'm not like, and I, yes, I do own the largest or I'm the lead investor in the largest cannabis uh, business in Germany, stock market listed symbiotic. Right. But I'm, I'm, I don't know the, the full scope of the American world in cannabis. But like we definitely, what I want to say is psychedelics are no consumer play. They yeah. won't be recreationally allowed. They shouldn't be recreationally allowed. It's a very strong therapeutic, different than cannabis. You have to do it with a therapist. Yeah, it takes time, that's for sure. We're just so at the beginning of this, aren't we? But so much compelling data that's being produced. Um, Fire uh, uh, chat question. Um, three benefits of psychedelics. Name them. Well, cures mental health issues, makes you more creative, and makes you at overall happy. Right. Where is this industry in three years from now? Definitely two approved drugs, Compass and MAPS, meaning MDMA. Right. What makes Christian Egermeyer happy? <laughs> life itself. Yeah. I think yeah. life is awesome. Life is awesome and life has bad days, life has bad episodes, but I think I have a genuinely excitement for life itself. I think it's important for people to understand too, like you've been able to build relationships with people like Peter Thiel, you know, founder of PayPal, first investor in Facebook. You put on events and events that were, like I said before, Queen Latifah, Kevin Love, Giannis. Um, how have you been able to establish relationships like that? Because, you know, for people that don't attend a lot of these events, people look up to you they like 
look to your advice and direction on where this industry is going, the conversations that you're having, where you think this future will go. But if people over here in North America want to get to understand who you are a little bit more, um, how are you able to build and build a lot of these relationships that you have? What's it say about you, I guess? It's a good question. I mean, this would be a question to other people, but like, I would say <clears throat> two things. The one is like what you would say in finance, the power of compounding. Yeah of hopefully being a nice guy. I really want to be a good guy. Like I think if you, you can't be in psychedelics and be an asshole, hopefully. Yeah, so, and I think if you're a nice person, a, a genuinely nice person yeah. over, I'm in the business now and I always like think that, oh God, I'm so old. Like when I started when I was 19, yeah, and now I'm 44, so I'm since 25 years investing and in starting companies. So you just, if you're a good, nice person and if you perform well, if you make people money, yeah, you build up a network. It's yeah. literally, the, it's not, there is no magic formula. It's like persistence meets, hopefully, performance meets being a, a good person. Where'd you grow up? Uh, in a 90 people village in Bavaria. Wow. Like nobody knows it. I couldn't even like, there is not even a big city I could name, wow. uh, which is like near that. Like it's obviously everybody thinks of Munich, but Munich is uh, two and a half hours away. Had a great upbringing with mom it and dad. It was mom and dad, great, very normal, very basic, very, I was playing, literally my, my memory is like, I was outside in the countryside, summer and winter. Yeah, I was always playing with other children. Um, so where did no the passion phone. and investment, like self-taught, like where'd you go to school? Well, there, like, like, like a normal school, like, no, but I, it was very funny because like, on the one side I had sort of these like, upbringing like in a 70s tv series like yeah. my little farmer thing it's called yeah. here yeah it was yeah. literally like that um on the other side there were no entrepreneurs neither in the family nor in uh in the village and uh but i always knew that this is it even didn't have words for it but like i i was selling stuff on the street like very cliche really? but i but, but i was always very into you that hustle yeah at an early yeah age. exactly i was always hustling my 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 mom still remembers that the very Where does first that come from then? nobody knows nobody knows i am the child of my parents though because i look like them yeah that's really good because the joke <laughs> is always if you meet my parents yeah and if you wouldn't if you ignore the looks you would definitely not think i'm the child wow and then not, not in the bad like, they, they're just different like uh, but like my mom still remembers that the first thing i was doing was when I was learned to write, okay. I was writing invoices and price tags. <laughs> Are you yeah. serious? I'm serious. They still they have them still. Wow. Um, and so I always saw the whole world through the lens of uh, business. Right. When we look at this world that we're in right now, I can't help but think, you know, this industry is huge growth potential, badly needed. Uh, I assume that you can't help but feel like outside of the whole business side of things, uh, this is something that very much the world needs, correct? Yeah, meaning I think, I, let's go, the biggest picture, we, or the biggest thing, okay, what do we, mental health at the end has a, a t what you would call in tech, like total addressable market of 100% of the world population, because it's not just, meaning on the one side, we have these famous 1 billion people uh, who have a mental health issue. Yeah. By the way, Side note, this number is grossly too low. First of all... I was going to say a billion, you think that's too low? It's way too low because it's, first of all, it's still... It's a lot of people still. But, it's, but even worse, like it's, it's still a stigmatized disease. So many people who have a mental health issue are not coming forward with it. Right. It's, this is luckily getting better, mm -hmm. but the more we destigmatize, the more this number will grow. Mm -hmm. Second, the world we're building, yeah, and as much as you and I like it and the, the, the viewers, yeah, all the technological disruption, whatever, is not good for our brain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So with more disruption, with more innovation, we're gonna how you, see. How do you stop that, though? Well, we can't stop it. Like we, this is the sort of how negative you side. With it, I guess. Then comes in psychedelics. So first of all, the number of patients will grow. I, I bet we're sitting here. Hopefully, we're doing it again in five years. And unfortunately, we're gonna officially talk about two, three billion people right. with a diagnosed mental health issue. But then I go one step further, where do actually mental health issues start? Why do we, meaning I can tell you the, the scientific answer, you do a questionnaire, yeah, uh, and if you score a certain sort of number, then you are diagnosed to be depressive. Mm. But what is if you slightly below that number? Yeah, are you then fully happy? Right. You're not depressive? Are you something in the middle? So what I wanna say is ultimately being truly happy is what we all want. Right. Do, do, do one thing at, a, at the next dinner. If you have dinner with people, ask them what they want in life. And then the first wave of answers is always, oh, I want children, I want a great job, I want 
whatever money, I want a car, but then say, why do you want that? Why do you want children? Why do you want a car? Why do you want anything? Security, and if you, but right? why do you want security? Yeah. Peace uh, of mind. Why do you want peace of mind? Yeah. And I bet the ultimate answer is always because I want to be happy. If you poke people yeah. long enough, yeah. the answer where it ends is because I want to be happy. So the, the wish to be happy is what 100% of the population wants. So and ultimately, this is what psychedelics do. Right. So ultimately, I would say the total addressable market for psychedelics will right. be 100% of wow. the population, which has the potential. I know it's a daring answer, but like I think a Thai can be one of the most valuable companies in the world. Wow, it's a bold statement. But if you're saying it's not based on hope, it's all data. No, data, science so combined look? with one sort of market. clinical trials, the drug gets approved by the FDA. This goes to market. How is it then as far as accessibility, the cost? Like, how does that all work then? Well, I think like there will be different models, like the same, by the way. Like, what's your thoughts on this whole clinical explosion of ketamine and stuff like that that's happening? Right, because they're laying the ground for okay. then I, mean, I think we're going to see a renaissance actually of therapists because like many therapists I speak to know that these drugs work. Actually, there are, which is very really? sad. That's the conversations that you have. Even more, even more. There are many therapists who use it already now, they grow mushrooms themselves because they're like, I have sworn an oath. What is the English term? Hippocratic oath, I think is the English term. What, what doctors do, oh, okay. that they yes. have to do the best for their patients. Right. And they're like, I know I see my patient suffering and I know there is a medication, right. but it's legally not available. But before my patients takes their life or whatever, I'm gonna help them, although I could go to jail. So, so they're all thanking us and saying, finally, you're bringing these drugs back into the legal medical world, mm -hmm. yeah, which we need to help the people. Because most of the other stuff which you have at the moment in neuroscience and psychiatry, whatever, is either shit, like SSRIs, yeah, yeah. whatever, yeah. or doesn't really work and is maybe is like, a, how you call it, like a Band-Aid, but not a real cure or solution. So what I want to say is like... We have to think beyond just money. Exactly. So what we're giving these, these therapists their literally the best tools and finally they, they hopefully will have a fulfilling job. Yeah, so I think we're gonna see a, a way more many people, like actually the guy who interviewed me on stage, uh, Richard, he said his, his taxi driver overheard a conversation and said right. she's actually a doctor or a therapist, but she didn't wanna do it again because she couldn't help people, but she's just waiting and then going back to wow. be a therapist because then she has the tools right. at hand. So, and I, so I think we're gonna see, have way more therapists out there because it's gonna be a desirable job because we, because they yeah. can really help people. Yeah. And yeah, I was going to say like before, and I was saying it, but it can't just be about money. We've kind of put the cart before the horse and that. that no, and then you're going to have, you're going to have like, it's don't a get me wrong. I'm like, yeah. I want people to make money. No, absolutely. That's... But I mean, they're going to, this is what I'm saying. Like they're going to be different levels. Like they're going to be people who go to the high end retreat, but I mean, and also it's not about money all the time. Some people will want, uh, oh, I'm going to go to a forest with my therapist. Yeah. The others want the very clinical settings. There are right. more people than we think who don't want the um, spirituality around. They want to see a doctor, do it in a doctor's office, which looks like a doctor's office. Horses for courses, like, yeah. But So yeah. You, you feel within the industry, like me personally, like I see it, envision it as like, okay, I'm a male, I'm married, you know, have a child, busy. You know, there's probably a lot of men that feel a lot of pressure at this stage of their life, trying to provide for families. Um, not looking at, you know, severe anxiety, severe depression, but at times it's got to weigh yeah. on you. Life can be stressful. But yeah. that to me would make more sense. I don't need to go to the Mojave Desert or forest or anything like that. I just would like to something simple. You have a therapist, of... but so many people already have a therapist, like, but in the future you would go to your therapist and, and trip with them maybe once a year and maybe you don't have full depression, but maybe you say, look, you feel the weight of being a father and a businessman. Right. Yeah. And a public figure at the same time. And you just want to learn more about yourself that it's going to be, by the way look at uh, look at plastic surgery mm -hmm. this is not a medical issue it was mainly though invented and done by people who really had medical issues but now if people want i don't know change their face or change their boobs yeah uh, we don't say oh you need a medical issue no it's like very normal now right. and, oh. and the same gonna happen yeah with uh, I, was, I was actually reading the other day big surgery for men that are getting their legs extended. What? Yes. Yeah, I don't need that. But I know. I, I was like, it's pain, painful. That's they really break, painful. They break like both uh, femurs and it's like oh. a one year uh, oh, oh, surgery. That's... And there's these screws that basically extend the bone. And I'm like, oh my God. Okay. Psychedelics is way more, way more, <laughs> way more pleasant. No, but you know what I want to say? Like, I think we're going to talk in five years and we're going to have, yeah. 
I would I love say how you're an innovator though that you're looking at things from DeFi, crypto, life sciences, like with the psychedelic side, like we are on the cusp of major change within the world. And, um, you know, you love speaking and hearing and connecting with people like you that are, you know, visionaries that where does the world look within five years and how are habits going to change? Um, I think it's badly needed uh, because let's face it, the world is an aging planet. When you look at the audience, and a lot of the people still making a lot of decisions in government. Um, and I don't want to bring up um, how these industries are going to be made based on government. But I think when you look at mainstream media and the way things are looked, there's still a lot of baby boomers that are in place that are making a lot of these decisions. But as we get older and we see change, I think it'll happen and happen quite quickly. So anyway, listen, I appreciate the time. Thanks, you. This Off was great. To LA tomorrow. I heard Dubai yes. a couple of days after that. Yes, and then back to London. So a little bit around the world. Heading to Mars with Elon, maybe no, next that, I, I, I'm going to wait a tiny bit for any space travel. I thought about it, but I'm going to wait a tiny bit. Have you bit. really thought about it? I thought about it, but I, I also believe, as you know, that I have the potential, and we all have the potential, to become some hundred years. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a very, a very, call it conservative, a very restrictive view on risk. Yeah. Um, so, for example, I don't like driving a car. This is fine because we're driving in the city. We wouldn't die if we have an accident. But I don't go on a German autobahn unless I really, really have to. Because if you really believe what I truly believe, that we're going to be some hundred years or we yeah. have the potential to, to become some hundred years, yeah, then suddenly any risk is stupid because you would forfeit, right. you would give away like... Mm -hmm. um, Oh, maybe hundreds of years, like sort of, I would never drive a motorbike. I would never do bungee jumping. I would at the moment not go to space because like I, if anything happens, yeah, that potentially cuts uh, some hundred year life short. Mm. You believe in longevity? Yes, hundred percent. I mean, I'm, I'm, we have the two largest companies for real longevity, like real drug development, where we will be able when we succeed, and I'm very sure we succeed, to push life expectancy for several decades at first. And if we then push it for several decades, then all bets are on because right. then, yeah, let's see where this is going. If people want to learn more about you and your firm, it's Pyron Investment Group. Can yeah, it's find you online. Yeah, it's a Pyron A P E I R O N minus sign yeah, investments dot com. Okay. And obviously, it's a Thai A T A I dot life. Right. Wow. And you've had that uh, investment group for how long? Well, I'm practically doing this since 25 years with that name um, because I had four partners. We split in a very nice way 2012. So it had a, another name before, but like uh, with the name of Pyron since 2012, but it's practically my life. What's your total uh, managing assets that you have? We have time? a little bit more than three billion. Three billion. Impressive. Listen, I've always loved talking with you. It's finally uh, great to get a chance to see each other in person. Hopefully soon again. I know, Not great like, city, right? Yeah. Maybe we get a chance to go to France. I want to come to that event yes, next year. Yes, 22nd that, yeah, of July. That uh, sounded like that was a really good event. It was a good turnout for your first inaugural event for really initiative to help promote just mental health, correct? Yeah. yeah. No, let's do that. And it'll only grow next year as well. Appreciate the time. Cool. All right. Perfect. Thanks for having me. Yes. Thanks, thanks for Christian. watching. Take care. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching. So what'd you think of the interview? If there's any information that you want to know more of or want to learn about, then provide us with feedback by leaving a comment below. And if you like what we're producing, then feel free to subscribe to our channel, share this video with your network, and as well, click on that bell for all notifications because we would not be here without you. We appreciate it. Thanks for watching, everyone.